that's the thing that I really like about him as a music person. He's playing this, this obscure R&B stuff that I mean, I for one never heard. And, and not only is he playing it, he's like, he knows it. I mean, he knows this stuff cold and he loves it. He's not just spinning records between commercials. I mean, this is his calling in life to turn people on to this music. <laughs> I first started listening to the Geeter was in uh, uh, 1974 when I was 12 years old, and he started uh, during like that oldies revival of like the Sha Na Na era of like 1974. And I started to listen to uh, WCAU FM when he started the show again, and he started playing these songs I, I never heard before, like um, "Don't You Know" by Rico and the Ravens, and all these obscure songs, and I, I really loved it because it was these songs I never heard before in my life. And, it was amazing. I started to buy all these records at Val Shively's and started getting into a lot of these groups that uh, only the Geeter plays. The best, when it comes to ears, he hears something people don't hear. He definitely knows music. I mean, he's a dancer, so he knows that whole end of it. Um, but he definitely has the best set of ears in this business. Jerry Blavitt is in the summer of 1960. I was going to camp in uh, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and I would tune in the radio and hear him, you know, Geeter with the Heater, the Boss with the Hot Sauce, broadcasting all you young teenagers and playing some completely astonishing uh, rhythm and blues record. I was trying to find out more than what was happening on the top 40, and, you know, when I could get his station, I knew I was hooked into the main line. <laughs> that I don't even know. When I go on his show or when I am around him, he just plays, he finds the most, it, it, you know, some people in the oldie scene, they play music because it's purely just because it's esoteric. He plays esoteric stuff, but it comes from that place, the truth and whether the song is popular or not, if it's coming from that place of truth, he plays it. Those of us who, uh, who, who love the music will always remember him as the guy who played it for the first time. He turns you on to so many different things you wouldn't otherwise hear. When Jerry's name comes up, regardless of what else might be said, the one commonality is, oh yeah, he turned me on to, and then it'll be six or seven songs or whatever that they otherwise wouldn't have heard. favorite moment of listening to Jerry Blevitt was he would play the song My Hero and um, it was such a great song and nobody else played it and he would play it and at the end he would go bagpipes, bagpipes and the bagpipes at the end of My Hero would play and it was such a exciting moment and still when I, I have a single of it and when I listen to it um, uh, I always hear Jerry in my, in my ear going bagpipes Sure. Geeter, what do you know about him? The Geeter with the heater? Yeah, I heard of him. Oh. Yeah. Did you ever listen to a show or see a show? Yeah, oh yeah. He's well known in the city. Have you ever heard of the Geeter? Oh, uh, the Geeter with the heater, Jerry Blavitt. Yes. This is Alan Iverson Jr. right over here. <laughs> this is Iverson Jr. over here. Put me on the this is Billy Stewart. <laughs> Billy, Billy Stewart. Messed it up and did it. Oh, my, my man. man. And this man here is Alec Haley. Alec Haley. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That's work. my man. Hey, man. And this is this is what you're going to be looking like when you grow to be my age. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
no, I don't look like it now or anything like it now. He used to call me Richard Gear all the time. He, and he'd do a radio show on Sunday nights. So he calls, he's saying, oh, we got Richard Gear out there and Bridget. And he's saying all this stuff. All of a sudden, maybe two hours later, he calls me up to the stage, said, this girl wants to meet you. So she says, you ain't Richard Gear. I said, I know I'm not. This girl drove 40 miles to see Richard Gere because he was calling me Richard Gere. <laughs> no, and that's no lie. That's without a lie. He seems to have this incredible energy. I mean, it just goes and goes. Where do you think that energy comes from? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I wish I had some of it. <laughs> Where does Jerry get his energy? Yeah. He's got it, don't he? Yeah. It's amazing. He'll have it to the end. I followed him around about four days and could never catch him getting it. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I asked him, I said, Jerry, do you have any of them Mexican jumping beans around there or something like that? Because I've never seen an individual with that much energy. Yeah, he's always, he's always moving. <laughs> always yeah. moving. And talking. Cat's got wrong. Cat's got away. It couldn't be found. You dig it, old fam, and you tear him down. Old fam. Where do you think he gets his energy? Uh, you know, I wish I knew because I could probably use some. It's rare. That's all I can say. I don't know where he gets it from, but it's rare. Maybe he's from outer space or something. <laughs> he gets it from the music, man. He gets the energy from the music. <laughs> comes from the music, the people. I think those two elements, I think, really keeps Jerry going. Oh, he's had that. That's built in. That's built in energy. He's always had that. Where do you think he gets his energy? I have no idea, but I'll have to find out. I'm going to try to find out what he eats. What I think, but then no, y'all don't care what I think. Just me, Mr. Strange, I think he eats a lot of chocolate. Went on a spree, mad a good way, 603, spent all his money. He gets his energy from the love of what he does. Peter doesn't do anything, whether it's cooking, no matter what he's doing, he's having a good time. He doesn't do too many things that he don't feel like doing. It's like somebody uh, at a party, they don't leave they're having a good time, you know? See that steeple? That's a church called St. Elizabeth's. That's right across from where I was born and raised. There is a little hall right where that steeple is on the second floor, and I ran my first dance. The first two weeks, I charged 25 cents. But I found out I wasn't making any money at 25 cents. I then charged 50 cents. It became the biggest dance in South Philly. It became so successful that I had to go to get a bigger hall. I then moved to the Dixon House, and then when I went on radio, 2,000 kids wagged this shabu. a couple thousand kids in the wagoners on a Sunday afternoon. It was like right after church, you know, went home, got changed, got on your dancing shoes and clothes, and away you went. It was great. Jerry moved all over the place, but he opened up in Shavu on a Sunday afternoon. I guess in 1962. Uh, we went there, saw this guy. We had heard of him, never seen him, and it was great. He had all the top stars here. I met Jerry, I was about 14 years old, just dancing, having a good time. To me, Jerry was an adult because he was like six or seven years older than I. And um, he was nice to kids and he did love the music, for real. He 
he had like a, a, one place called the shade room, ballroom, and he, you know, they had so many kids there, the, the floor would go up and down. You wonder if it's going to really uh, cave in or not. We were looking for something to do. You know how it is with teenagers. And we heard about this dance down in 69th Street, and we went down. It was the coolest thing we had ever done. So we went four straight years in a row, every Friday and Saturday night. We learned all the dances. Jerry was wonderful with kids. I mean, he got down and danced with us, and I wouldn't have traded those years for anything. And it's funny because the kids here in Philadelphia do more dances than anybody else in the world. All over the country, they do one dance to every song. Here, they do different dances to every song. This is the Wagner Walk. And to do it, it's very easy. So Vince, how long have you known Jerry? What do you think of him? Uh, I've known him since like 1963, 64. I started listening to him on radio when he started in WCAU in Camden. I think he's uh, one of a kind. There'll never be anything anybody ever like him again. That's for sure. And um, he just he's a personable person. He makes everybody feel good. And uh, that's why we still come to this day. And even at my age, we still come out. and makes you feel young and happy. And you remember the dancing that you did. And, uh, it's just a, a really good time, you know. We go like three times a week to see him, and he's just, he's a part of our life now. It makes growing older a little easier. <laughs> do if he ever retired. <laughs> Jerry keeps us together, keeps us extremely young and fit. As you can see, most of the people are slimmed down, looking good. He's like the Pied Piper. No matter how much you say, I'm bored with this tonight, I'm not going, you get dressed, you go. He has that, he just has that quality about him. It's, it's just something you, you know, they say that the, the most important things in life you can't touch and you can't feel, they're in the heart. And that's just the way he is. Yes. I said, we were kids, and I said, uh, we treasure him. I said, uh, what we've learned and what we got from him, and the fact that he's still here and that we're still here, that we're just as young as he is. And he's kept us that way, and it's just from dancing. He's a phenomenal guy, loves to dance. We love the music, and we're still dancing now that we're beyond teenagers. <laughs> I wish he had been a prince, because, you know, he's got so much energy, and he could convince people. I wish he had, would have been a priest. <laughs> days, you know, being a teenager, well, I'm sure in any period, but for me, being a teenager was a lonely, tough time, and being able to turn on the radio and hear, you know, a voice of somebody who really seemed to care, had warmth and humor, and just played great music was really important to me. And as we say, each and every night on the lover's part, Need someone, that's someone. Well, that's the fox. And the fox, she needs someone. And that someone is the coyote. Coyote need the fox. The fox need the coyote. Like the bee need the honey. Like the flower. The gator with the heater? Yeah. Absolutely. The mouth with the gator or the gator with the, I don't know, I forgot his slogan. <laughs> is, it, is it one of those? You haven't heard of the gator? Jerry? No. They flipped over the show. 
bought the show immediately. But the thing that they liked was that the host didn't wear a suit and tie. He wore chukka boots, he wore a sweater, and he danced on the podium with the rest of the kids. <laughs> So they said to me, we got to come up with a name for the show. Do you have any ideas? So I'll give you an idea. These kids are dancing with the disc. It's the sound. Let's call it the discophonic scene. Hey. Get a call from Melkhorn, who has Pepsi-Cola. He says, we have a drink called Mountain Dew. He said, it's owned by Pepsi-Cola. None of the independent bottlers want to touch it. I said, I got an idea, Mountain Dew. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to pass this soft drink out to all of the kids in the stands. And I'm going to say, will Papa Dew take a sip from the heater with the heater? I got something for you. It's brand new. It's called Mountain Dew. I want you to take a sip. Because once you take a sip of Mountain Dew, this is the way it works. Yahoo! Mountain Dew, it's good for you. Becomes the biggest soft drink for the summer of 65. Now this is after one week on TV I created this. Get another call from Lip Brothers. Lip Brothers is one of the old department stores in Philadelphia. I have a meeting with the president of Lip Brothers. I go through the store with him. I said, why would a young teenager, as I call them, want to come in and do a place and shop? Why don't you create a discophonic style shop? Discophonic styles for the guys, discophonic styles for the girls. So they created a whole discophonic style shop in the department store. First time they ever did it. It became the biggest thing. The show went from a half an hour to an hour within three weeks. That's how hot this show was. What is your name, my man? Joe Hannon. Joe, where are you from? Big Ab of Philadelphia, big time, Joe. Seven Arts syndicates it. We're in 40 markets. Because of that success, WFIL across the street, which originally wanted the show, but they were bought out by CBS, comes to us and says, we want to do a Saturday night 7.30 show with you. We want to call it the Jerry Wilder Show. Yeah, baby. That became so successful that we then went five days a week in a show called Jerry's Scene. We used to dance up the ramp. And I had everybody in it. We had the temptations. With it. And the great thing about those shows is that we did it live. No lip sync. We did everything live. Let me tell you something. You're really a terrific TV audience. I mean that sincerely. Let's give them a big hand. A big hand over here for these people. Huh? Freeze! Don't dare touch that screen. This is the Discophonic TV Scene. The Discophonic TV Scene, brought to you by Lip Brothers, brought to you by Mountain Dew, Yahoo! Mountain Dew, it's good for you. Lip Brothers, Mountain Dew, Hawks Fifth Avenue Candy Bar, and the man who was the host, well, Gene Crane, the announcer, would say, the Discophonic Scene, with the teenage greeter, the teenage leader, the eater with the heater, the boss with the hot sauce. The camera would zoom on in, and there was a little guy with chukka boots, khaki pants, little v neck sweater, and he'd say greetings and salutations to the entire population of this fantastic nation. My name is the Eater, and we've got the Supremes. Camera would then zoom on the Supremes. We've got Chuck Berry. Camera would zoom on Chuck Berry. We also have the Temptations. And for one soft hour, the greatest dancers in the entire world came out of Philadelphia with every different dance, the Boogaloo, the 81, the Mashed Potatoes, the Stomp, the Cha-Cha, the Watusi, the Fly. Back then I called them young teenagers, today you're looking at them, they're the young teenagers. Charlotte, Ray, Joanne, Eddie, Cookie, Angelo, and all the people that I've missed, they look as good today as they did back then. Their parents, grandparents, and God bless them, they have as much fun dancing today as they did back then. And they happen to be a great example of how good it is to grow old with the music that's been a part of our lives for 40 years.
Me and TV, we're not strangers with TV. We've been doing a TV show for the past two years, and we've been putting together many different things for the now generation. You will see it in the brand new Jerry Blavitt show. How do we reach the now generation? Combination of things. Live music, guest stars, audience, dancers, and hosts. Now, you take the guest stars that you're going to see on the Jerry Blavitt show. These guest stars come from all over. They're the latest, they're the biggest, and they're the ones that the now generation want to see. We don't only have them perform. We sit, we talk, we talk about things concerning the now generation. Our audience comes to see the guest stars. They also come to perform. They show you the latest dances, and the dances that you're going to be seeing on the Jerry Blavitt Show are dances like the Boogaloo, the Frug, but the newest of all the new you also see, too. You'll see things like the Whipple Walk, the Wagner Walk, the Shabu Walk. You've got guest stars, you've got dances, and now you've got a host. The host for the now generation must take all of these ingredients and tie it into one. They must talk with the guest stars. They must know the dancers, just like our audience, and they must be a part of what is happening in today's young, modern world. That is exactly what the new Jerry Blavitt show is about. It's a Today show for your audience tomorrow. It's what's happening today in the now world, made up not simply of teenagers, but that age group of 16 to 36. Right now, I'd like to take a little bit of your time and show you what the new Jerry Blavitt show looks like for your audience. <laughs> what do you got at the link then? Um, there's not enough, basically there's not enough brain power for it to remember. I got you, yeah. And um, it, I just didn't want to go through and, and delete you. things at random without the right. okay that we don't need them anymore. I got you. What do you got? You got campos? Campos. How many got campos you got? Got two, three campos. Get rid of it. But now, how about the Gator Gold? Do you have the Jerry Blavitt Presents, you know, Gator Gold Radio Salutes? Do you have that on there? I got it here. Car. I got GGR Fine, Gator Gold Salute. Get rid of the salute? No, no, don't get rid of the salute. Get rid of get the rid three campers. Camp That's on car. Okay. Well, I'm not done. That's not all, right? Cheap trick, George Thurgood, go to some items up, James Brown, pop, 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 pop. We'll all entertain you. Boom. So you work together now. What kind yeah. Of work do you do? Well, I do whatever he, whatever's needed, you know? Like, he, he doesn't have somebody who can do the little finesse things, like when you write a letter to somebody to spell everything correctly and make it look good and to know the right things to say or to do his billings and do it accurately and keep track of stuff. So I do the billing at the station and I do his correspondence and when he was doing his TV shows, I helped him set up the interviews and transcribe them and research. I do whatever he needs, you know. If he, um, we do the column together, I edit his column. Uh, I, so th basically, whatever he needs, that, and he doesn't like, he doesn't like it. Well entertained. Okay, that says the whole thing. Okay. You want to get that, John? No. All right. And that's Anne Marie from Tom office. Yeah, okay, fine. That's Tommy Boy Records. Hi, baby. I'm getting a wonderful spiritual education working for him because he's very tough to work for. Everybody who works for him says the same thing. He is tough. John, this is this is the thing that goes on for the tape that's for today. Alright? Uh, yeah, in other words, the show that's running now yeah. will be going down to the shore. I'm going to take it down when I go down this weekend, the memories. Okay. All right? That's what you got. What's the, what do you think is the best and the worst part of working for or with Jerry? Um, it's great working with a legend. Pop, 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 pop. Uh, and more. We'll entertain you. That's it. We'll entertain you. All right? We'll entertain you. And food. And food. 
There's crab cakes, chicken, that's it, food. There's crab cakes, chicken gumbo, jambalaya. He just likes control, so he wants things done a certain way, and uh, he's critical, and he assumes that you know that he thinks you're great. And food, there's crab cakes, chicken gumbo, jambalaya. Uh, and from one of your favorite, seafood cafes, food from Chickie and Pete's. Now, what do I have to run to, to the bank with now? Peter Gold. The, um, the invoices for the invoices for Victor for Metro. Okay, I just had that. I, and I, then also the Sam the Sam stuff for I Metro got, Nissan. I got it all here. Okay, and I'll be right back. And then I, I got to run over. Okay. You have two sets of Metro stuff. Too. I got it. I got it. Okay, John. Okay. All right, I'll be back. Oh, Lord, Lord, why did you make me human? I've got to laugh. I've got to cry. I've got to live. a psychologist but when you're on that kind of a schedule you don't have to look inside you don't have to deal with your life you just go and I think Jerry needs to do this uh, the, the geeter needs to be out there and that's all you see you don't you don't see Jerry because that vulnerability he doesn't show but this schedule allows him to keep this vulnerability within himself as well and that way like many of us, he can he can avoid reality. So when he says, I'm gonna give this up, when he was, you know, in his 40s saying, you know, 50, that's the cutoff, I would laugh, and you know, 55, then it was 60, and now it's, well, I'll do this for a while. Jerry has to do this. Human. I've gotta work every day. So little love, so I say Jerry's about 80% nice guy. There's another 20% of Jerry that I don't understand. I've never been around to see it in action, so I just, I guess I'll never understand it. Clear and very cold tonight. Going to be a real cold one tonight. Watch out. Get some body heat next year. Low 24. A mixture of sun and clouds tomorrow. Very cold. The high are only 36. I always want to be a disc jockey. My name is High Lit. That's my radio name and television name. My real name is Hyman Aaron Litt, born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Got on the air when the beginning of rock and roll began. And um, it was a rocket ride. It still is a rocket ride. I've been in the business for 50 years. Jerry and I disagreed on a couple of things. So unimportant, I can't even remember them. But I respect him as a disc jockey. I respect him as a DJ, as a human being, as an entertainer. He's got a lot of class. But then there's that 20%. Angelo Bruno was, for probably uh, at least the 1940s, or at least the 1950s, probably even from the, from the earlier mid-40s on, through his assassination in, in March of 1980, was the undisputed, uh, alleged ma head of the mafia in, in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia mafia family. And uh, his, his shooting, his, his murder in, in March of 1980, set off Goodfellas kind of stuff, and you know, and, and, and wars that go on literally to, are going on to this day. See, I don't believe that a piece of paper really signifies what's in someone's heart. Hmm. You know, it's it's it's. How can a piece of paper tell me? It's in my heart. Right. Hello, young man. Happy New Year, Chris. Hello, guys. Pretty lady. Pretty lady.
amazing. You know, it's like an Indian. You get knocked off your horse, and you get up again, and you get back on it. You get knocked off, you get back on it, and then you ride it. But you can't be afraid of it. You can't be shy, and you can't let the horse get the better. subjects, Native American Indians. It's sad that we never preserved that heritage. never taken by a white man. He never really lived in one place. He traveled between his people, the Cheyenne, and he was a great warrior. He was very spiritual also. He lived like this. I live like this. My bicycle, my work, my bicycle, this, that, that, and that's it. developed instinctively and I'm free like a Native American Indian. I mean he rode his pony, I ride my bicycle. He just gotta do what he's gotta do, man. I drive and ride my bicycle like a Native American Indian used to ride his pain horse. Take out the oil, all right? And when you would pitch, you pitch this way, this way. Now, I, as the batter, would be over here with my mother's broom. You take the broom top off, and when you got the pitch, boom! If you hit it, show where the single was. The guy didn't catch it. When it hit the wall, this was a single, all right? If you went from here to there, that was a double. If you went from that roof to that roof, over there was a home run. This was my playground, playing half ball. Half ball, remember? Yeah. Playing with Billy, little, your son Billy. Right, right. And Roberta, how she could catch a oh, ball. Boy, oh, boy. she. My, when we, my sister was the greatest sister. catcher. Was very athletic, very, played as good as a guy. We played football on here. They played bocce ball over Everything. here. Everything. Yeah. But everything's well with you? Yeah, thank God, Jerry. I'm okay, as long as I can do it for myself. Tell me about the kids. Uh, Billy has a house at the Gerard Estate. Okay. And uh, Vicky's in North Carolina. Really? She's been living there. Yeah. They're opening up a little coffee shop. Oh, yeah. And is the neighborhood safe for you, Josie? Not really. Especially at night. At night, nobody goes out. I can see that it's just completely changed. I can, see. I can see. I can see. I can see. Yeah. Billy picks me up, takes me over here. Josie, I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Joe. Nice Not a to fine see members. you. I love you. And my, my mom's at Roberta's. She's coming I know. Back. She's not Roberta to talked to me on the phone. She said she was taking her for a couple weeks. Yeah. I said when she comes back, maybe I'll Josie, get Josie, you live by yourself? Yeah. 
you need anything? Nothing at all, Jerry. You sure? Fine. Yeah, fine. Do you, 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 no, you can reach Roberta if you need me, right? I have Roberta's number. And you have my and number? And I have your mother's number. But if you need, reach whatever you need. Yeah, okay, Jersey. Okay. okay, it's All right, Jersey. Know. Love you. <laughs> Love you, too. All right, baby. Amazing. This is my humanitarian and I don't think he knows it but I think he is he saved more souls and put them on the right path than the than, than any priest that I know and let me tell you and that's no disrespect because I'm a Roman Catholic and I know the priest don't need it but Jerry Jerry saved a lot of souls out there he does things for he doesn't want his name on it at all he just does it because that's what he wants to do. All the Catholic people are all the priests and the nuns, and he goes to, to different homes. And he does all kind of things that are unspeakable. I mean, he's, he's just an amazing individual. No one could say a bad word about Jerry Blavitt because he is just an excellent guy. I mean, he goes out of his way to do anything to help anybody. I he mean, has enriched my life. He's a giving sort of a guy. Um, he uh, he's always there. You know, sometimes if you think he's not there, but he's there. If you really needed him, I mean, you you can always depend on him coming through. You ever heard of the Geeter? The Geeter with the heater. Yeah, he's, sure. What do you know about him? I know him well. Oh, you do? Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, you like the show? You like the I show? love his show, yeah. Any stories on the Geeter? No, can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> the Geeter Club? No, the Geeter is a guy. No. Never heard of the Geeter? It's a disc jockey. No. The Geeter with the heater? No. no. Is, is this porn? Yeah, he knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He's acting like he doesn't know him, but he knows him. Well, who knows him? We don't know. He, he's his brother. That's all brother. And have you ever heard of the Geeter? The Geeter? Oh, yeah, Jerry Bobbitt. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What do you know about him? Um, I've been to his club in Margate before, Memories. And my mom has been on stage and danced with the Geeter many times. with their career. They had songs like Put Yourself in My Place, Heaven Must Have Sent You, Stay in My Lonely Arms, Darling Baby. I now present to you the group that started Motown's VIP record label. Put your hands together and welcome the magnificent Algins. <laughs> Well, Jerry Blabbit is such an outstanding personality. He had helped the Elgins. He had us in uh, booked in Pennsylvania and Delaware and Jersey before anybody was going around. I remember a time back about 30 years ago when he brought us the Four Tops and the Temptations to his club, and, and nobody really knew us back then. And ever since we uh, had our first record, darling baby and put yourself in my place he's really been helping the elders alone and he asked us to stop down here today for him and we were free and we came all the way here to be with the blabber very okay. black yeah. <laughs> one two three yeah. with Billy in the Ascension.
Yard since uh, 1960. 1960. 1960. He was one of the first people to play. Our first record was called The Dance Is Over. And he played it like in 61. He broke a lot of records. I mean, he played records before anybody else played them, and they became huge successes. Well, I can't explain that, but he's the reason I'm in this business. Okay, so let's have a big hand for the Dream Lovers. Where are they? Guys, come on out here. We were introduced to him uh, by our, uh, Jerry Ross, who at that time was our uh, uh, producer, producer of uh, Heritage Records, and he introduced Gita, the Gita to us. I just thought the Gita as big as he is now. I've got from He, he's the one that did a lot of the uh, uh, promotion for it and uh, pushing it. And uh, he's a great guy, man. And we've known him since 1960. 1960. Baby, baby. <laughs> Jumping around, all the things I do, they started calling me the percolator. The Gita was in my career right from the beginning. When I first met him in 64, I was uh, Billy Horner and the Expressions. And uh, he's been helping us ever since then. He's just, been, he's just a delightful individual. everybody they're the best but he's the best keeps the perk later perky <laughs> promoting a record back in the 60s is a lot different than it is nowadays they had so many different record hops not only people not only the gear which was he had one of the largest hops there ever was with anywhere from 1800 to 2600 kids always like 2,000 people so to try and get a record played at the radio station was a toughie. So I just started going around these different record hops, especially with the gear there with 2,000 people. And you do that, and before you know you got pe people calling up requesting for your song. And they say, what's this song here? They never heard of it yet, you know, and they're, you know, they're getting requests. It's because of the impact of places like the Gita's record hops. Plus his TV shows that he had had such a big impact. They really helped me a lot. I was getting television exposure even before some of the radio exposure. From Jerry's place and old Gita, he just, uh, he's younger than his tongue, a little older than his teeth. This is Little Gracie, Grace Little, doing a song which you all know called Maybe. You come. 
Back to the old neighborhood. Back to the old neighborhood. Back to the old neighborhood. How you feel? Back to the old neighborhood. How's everything? Never had a bad day. All right, there you go. Thanks for stopping, man. The Gita. Yeah, you get with the heater. Listen, 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 I was born and raised in this day, but before you cats even that's got right, it, man, right. I was just a young little boy. There you go. I'm Always you a go. pleasure. All right, you're all right. Take care, yeah, my man. Yeah. I see you wearing Alan's do on the head. Oh, no You got Iverson going, right? <laughs> no doubt. Oh, he took it from you. That don't make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, Jay. He rode on the bike. He rode on the car. Listen. I'm gonna be like you guys when I grow up. There you go, Jeff. How's business today, boss? You're looking good, God bless you. Take care, my man. Jerry. Hello, guys, what's happening, my man? No, Jerry, what the hell? What's up, Geek? You Damn. guys are the best. Hey, where the hell you been for 40 years? I've been, I'm coming back to the old neighborhood. How are you? Take my picture, please. <laughs> Don't do that. They're doing a documentary. Where you doing, How you doing, pal? Jesus you look good. Christ. Everything good? No, man, we need a good, we need a. Tell this guy what's that <laughs> <laughs> Don't say, don't say anything that you wouldn't say to anybody else. We'll talk privately. How you doing, man? Never had a bad day. Yeah, I'll take that. I will. I'll take the picture of that bike. Not me. Hey. All right, my pal. Pop some paint. Hello, youngster. Hi, friend. How you doing? Well, how's everything? All right, my buddy. The Gator with the heater. How you doing? Nice to see you. You take care. Thank you. Heater with the heater? My man. <laughs> heater with the heater. Take care, guys. Have the hot sauce. sauce. That's it, the hot sauce. Say hello to John. My man. Hot some pink. Hey. How you doing? How you doing, <laughs> you been, man? How you doing? Hi. Listen, you're in the right spot, my man. You get the big feet and everything, ain't you? <laughs> What's going on, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Well, you know, I'm still doing what I'm doing, and you're still doing what you did. Oh, yes. Because there's only a few of us left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is true. Wayne, how you doing, Wayne? And you are? The Gator with the heater. Johnny, it's nice to see you. My father did your phone calls many, many years ago. Really? Yes. Where are you from, Wayne? I live in all. I used to live in all of them. I live in Havertown now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're working for Grandpa Strowman. Yeah, it's a crummy job. <laughs> Say hello to your dad, Take okay? Take care. Hello, my buddy. How you doing, Jerry? All right, pal, how you doing? Good. My man. <laughs> I, I had the pleasure of knowing Mama Geeter for, God, I first met her 20 years ago. And uh, uh, she's one of a kind, and she's very proud of her, Jerry. Really, she really is. I've had the pleasure of doing some work for her. I have my own business. Uh, I've had some pleasure of doing work in her house. and. Uh, when I first went to her house, boy, she just showed me the Geeter memorabilia. It's a whole wall full of Jerry's pictures and different things, and she was proud of that. I went to every one of the dances that he had in Philadelphia. I used to go. And he used to get mad at me and say to me, Mom, don't you ever sit down. I said, Jerry, this is the way I want to go in the dance floor. Hi, kids. How you doing? Oh, What's wrong? Why are you taking pictures? You know? Oh no, they're doing a documentary on me. Don't even worry about it. How you doing? Oh, all right. It's just that I'm out uh, doing that d Democratic uh, 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 papers. I'm doing them out. Right. All around, like 15th and Market, uh, Gordon Chester. Good girls. 11th and, Ch 11th and Market. You're the best Democrat we've got. That's right. We've got to be. <laughs> Hi, kids. Uh, we're going to see Mama Geeter. Go upstairs now. Look for Mama Geeter. I think I really inherited my mother's, I think I have more of my mother in me than most sons.
if you would have known my mother, uh, she, from day, from the moment she woke up to the moment that she went to bed, she was always doing and doing and giving and doing and doing. Every mother should have a son like Jerry. He's so considerate in time and time. I'd rather see you sit there. <laughs> My mother was a special person in my life because she sacrificed her life. So I had a difficult time in dealing with that. And I knew that she was going to pass. And I didn't want, when she did pass, anybody coming up interfering with what I had to deal with. That's why there was nothing in the obituary columns because she was a very special person. Death is a very private thing. Geeter with a heater, Jerry Blavitt. Yes. What's happening, my man? Yeah. My <laughs> man. How you feel, my man? This is Alan Iverson Jr. right over here. <laughs> this is Iverson Jr. over here. <laughs> this is Billy Stewart. Billy, <laughs> Billy Stewart. <laughs> Messed it up again. Oh, my my man. man. And this man here is Alan Haley. Alan Haley. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That's my man. Hey, man. And this you're, is this is what you're going to be looking like when you go to be my age. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the heater? The gator with the heater? Yeah. Absolutely. Have you ever heard of the gator? Jerry? No. Hello, who's that with you? Oh, my God. My big kid. A big kid. And you're going to do it. Job of the way. Job of the Have you ever heard of the gator? Oh, the gator with the heater? Yeah, Jerry Blavitt. Have you ever heard of the Geeter? With the Heater, who? Jerry Blavitt? Is that who it is? Yeah, sure, of course. Have you ever heard of the Geeter? The Geeter? Oh, you Jerry Blavitt? Uh -huh. Ah! Movie star! My favorite! Oh my god! Oh my god! I've been telling you when you were a little boy! Oh, you were so adorable! You ever heard of the Geeter? I know the Geeter. Oh, you do? I know the Geeter, yeah, personally. I have an autograph from him. <laughs> 